Hello, beautiful homemakers. Let's jump right into pamphlet five of the original 1922 Fascinating Womanhood pamphlets. This subtitle is called How the Clever Girl Selects Her Clothes. In the last video, we discussed the importance of color. And this starts, No matter, however, whether the color be mannish or girlish, as discussed in the last video, in the style and the material, you ought to avoid everything suggestive of the masculine. Men never affect anything fluffy or lacy or gauzy or elaborate. Use such materials, therefore, wherever you can. And, of course, they often did that with their hats. Men never pay much attention to the extremes of style for men, but they expect a womanly woman to be the opposite of themselves in this respect, to be among the first to adopt the vagaries of fashion. And oh, how I disagree with that statement. Because as we discussed in the last video, fast fashion is now on a 52-week cycle. Every single week, the stores are getting in new fashions. It's impossible to keep up. It's impossible to be in fashion. You just need to focus on what looks good on you, the cuts and styles that fit your body, and the colors that are best for your skin tone. Just because a certain style or color is in fashion does not mean that you should wear it. Fashion trends are meant to simply make the suppliers money. They are not meant to make you look good. That is your job, and there is no need to look like everyone else. You need to stand out in a good way, and we are discussing this good way in these pamphlets, the way that actually attracts men, not the average blue jeans and white shirt. Let's go on. Plain materials, broadcloth, serges, etc., being materials such as the men themselves wear, you should avoid entirely, unless they are distinguished by an extremely girlish style or color. Otherwise, they can give no help in making men realize how unmanlike, how womanly you are. They cannot serve to bring out any contrast between your nature and his. Tailored styles, the extremely severe and simple sometimes seen in professional women, are too manlike to be of any value in emphasizing femininity or in attracting men. And we talked about, I think it was two videos ago, about how Drew Barrymore, she's so cute, but she is dressing in a masculine style lately, very off-putting to men. And so she is sending a clear message, I am not interested in men. She is looking as masculine as possible, so as not to attract men. You want to do the opposite. Tailored clothes are wonderful when they're tailored to fit your body. When they said tailored styles that are extremely severe and simple, they're talking about straight cuts that men often wear. Whereas our goal is to give the illusion as much as possible of an hourglass figure because that is the most flattering look a woman can have. It is a feminine look. Therefore, men are attracted to that figure. You may have daintily simple apparel made of feminine materials, but not the severely simple apparel made of such materials as the men themselves wear. Now this next part is in all caps, which means it's important, right? In short, what you must have is apparel that will never let people forget that you are a woman. That is as unlike what the men themselves wear as it can be. 
and that will emphasize and advertise every minute of the day the fact that you are a woman, entirely a woman, and nothing but a woman. This principle must be applied to every item of your dress, from slippers to combs, from your humblest apron to your most elaborate evening gown. Now, this is the opposite of how many women dress on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, pe women on television are dressed very well by stylists. Many fashion channels on YouTube, the women look amazing. But the everyday woman, when you go out in the world, doesn't look so great. And the majority of everyday women are not that attractive to everyday men. You can so easily stand out by what these pamphlets have been teaching. Color. So important. Cut. Fit. Feminine. That is the key. And this is not accomplished by showing off your cleavage or your bottom. I also want you to remember that just as these pamphlets were released in 1922, what were the fashions then? If you recall, they were shapeless silhouettes with a dropped waistline at the hips, which would then create a boxy appearance. Gotta be the worst costume ever. Men hated it then. Men would hate it now. And also, I want you to recall that this style of dress was especially popular with women who visited speakeasies, namely the flappers. And as we learned way back in pamphlet one, video three, I think it was, that flappers were anathema to society. They were despised and looked down upon, despite what the movies tell us today. No well-bred, respectable man would have been seen with a flapper. And no woman with any self-worth would have gone into a speakeasy. Now, I have a few pictures of my own female ancestors in those ugly, dropped waist dresses. These were not the flapper look with the fringe. These were boxy, dropped waist dresses, usually with a big flower at the hip. Looked terrible. And these pamphlets are trying to warn women that men do not find this look appealing. It's that hourglass figure, such as Mrs. Muir's tailored clothes. She was modestly dressed, and yet she had that hourglass figure. That's always been throughout history because that's what is attractive to men. This next part is called How to Select Your colors and styles. We've already touched upon this a bit. Let's see what they have to say from a hundred years ago. One very attractive girl of our acquaintance had these principles brought home to her recently. She had a complete outfit in brown for street wear. Brown shoes, tailored brown cloak with a brown fur collar, and a simple brown hat. It was perfect in style in taste and in fit and her women friends admired it immensely but as she went along the crowded street she attracted no attention from men whatsoever a little later she purchased a light blue cloak of unusual material smart in style and vivid in color to complete the outfit, she added gray shoes and a similarly colored hat, with, however, telling touches of pink and blue. Neither in her own opinion nor in the opinion of her friends was the outfit as tasteful or as harmonious as was the brown outfit which is so popular even today. 
We think it looks so put together. She was considerably surprised, therefore, when she wore the second and supposedly inferior outfit to discover when she passed along the same crowded street that not a man would pass without an interested glance at her and often a complete survey from head to foot. Even in the crowded street cars, she was rather amused to learn the men, all unconsciously, were attracted by her new attire. With the brown outfit, she could get on the car a score of times without a man offering her a seat. But with the vivid blue and gray outfit, one man or another somehow always felt impelled to sacrifice his comfort for the pleasure of her demure thank you. She was considerably entertained and astounded as well, watching the great difference the change in outfits made with the men. The explanation, however, is very simple. The first outfit was too much like what the men themselves wear, in color, in style, and in this case, even in material. It could not be expected to make her appear an exceptionally girlish woman. The second outfit, on the contrary, consisted of a combination of colors and styles such as no man would ever dream of wearing. Naturally, this outfit helped to emphasize the fact that here was a woman, as different from men as could be, a girlish girl, the quintessence of femininity, the kind of woman a man likes to cherish and protect. Every man alive is interested in a woman who gives such an impression in her outward appearance. So again, we're going right back to why are the fashion houses so wrong with so much? Because they don't care. They really don't care what you look like. They are dressing you for other women. They are often even gay men running the fashion houses. They think they know what looks good, but it looks good to other women. The everyday man begs to differ. So did this little story from a hundred years ago surprise you? I think it will most women. And that's why I feel the need to warn you about style classes on the internet. What we women like on ourselves and on other women is probably not what men like to see you in much of the time. You may be in style, but that doesn't mean you will be attracting your ideal husband. And a very similar story happened to me as well when I was in my 20s and I had to take the bus. I had to take the bus for one year to my work. When I was dressed in my colors, bright colors, men would go out of their way to say hello, hold open doors for me, give up their seats, let me in front of them in line, etc. On the bus, at the grocery store, everywhere I went. Then I didn't understand that the difference was in the clothes that I was wearing, but I understand now. I have always been astounded at the amount of male attention I have received whenever I've worn this black dress with the bright pink flowers. Even in my 50s, when in a parking lot walking into a store, I've had men say, looking good, you look lovely in that dress. And even, finally, a woman who knows how to dress like a woman, especially if I was wearing kitten heels. I have been wearing this dress for over 20 years, and it's a favorite of my husband's and my son's. It's flattering, bright, and feminine. As I talked about last time, I had taken to dressing in black or navy to hide the baby weight. Yet when I wear dresses with lots of pink, 
blue and purple, I would receive so much attention, despite the extra baby weight. And the same was true when I would wear a long white skirt with a pastel top, even though pastels are not my best colors. But I looked feminine. And the result was men opening the doors, men putting my grocery cart away, men saying you first to get in line at the bank or to check out at a store. Such a simple little thing, dressing in my best colors, in feminine garments, makes all the difference. This next subsection is called Clothes That Win the Admiration of Men. Men, when you come right down to it, are usually slovenly, careless, and indifferent about their clothes. To be attractive to them, therefore, you must be the opposite. Dainty, delicate, particular, tidy, and prim as can be. In bringing out the charming contrast between yourself and men, you must have an all-absorbing pride in your appearance. You must endeavor to appear at your best every minute of the day and under all circumstances. Too often girls let themselves be discouraged by the fact that they have not sufficient money to spend on apparel. Since they cannot have their clothes just the way they want them, their interest in the whole affair is lost. When not satisfied with their dresses, they feel no interest in brushing their coats, polishing their shoes, sewing up the rip in their gloves, or keeping their hair from stringing. This conception of the situation is entirely wrong. Ladies, think how different clothes are today 100 years later. We have comfy clothes in a wide variety of fabrics and colors at cheap prices from TJ Maxx and off Saks Fifth Avenue. And they are so easy to wash. Yet most people look slovenly and mismatched. Let's do better than the average female. Remember to refresh your makeup too. Before I end this video, I want you to know that I see a really marked difference in how people treat me and view me and interact with me when I am wearing a dress. Like the black one with the bright pink flowers, but also in similar dresses. People talk to me. Even other women will compliment me on my dresses. But do you know when I receive the least amount of interactions with both men and women? When I am dressed stylishly. Then, instead of being perceived as friendly, I have noticed people, both men and women, avert their gaze. I quickly decided that I would rather appear friendly than stylishly even after spending money on those style courses. I did learn many things, but several of their suggestions were really wrong, such as wearing printed t-shirts. Those never look good, and those are common, average. You don't want people staring at your chest trying to read what is on your shirt. You don't want them to notice the wording on your shirt. You want them to notice your face, your eyes, you. So ladies, when I wear a dress, it certainly isn't my good looks that are attractive to others. And it isn't my figure. It is what my clothes say for me. The really stylish clothes were just too snobby. But when I'm in those dresses, it says, I'm friendly, I'm open, I'm joyful. And that is what the men and the women are responding to. Remember that it is easy for a man to talk to and approach a soft-spoken, softly dressed, feminine woman. But it's very easy for him to walk away from a loud-mouthed, sloppily-dressed, masculine woman. 
And really quickly, after I posted last week's video, I thought of Laura Acuna. I put it on my website, but I'm sure many of you missed it. She said that she began her life as a skinny girl, but when she was 11, she gained 100 pounds in one or two years. And from that day on until her 50s, she lived that yo-yo dieting lifestyle of losing weight, gaining it back and more. Until her health was broken and she felt broken. Sometime in her 50s, she began thinking about God and her life and what God's definition of freedom truly means. And she has been on a healing path. She's really well known in other circles, but not so much on YouTube. She's only got a few views there. She has put her podcasts on YouTube. She actually didn't even mean to do it. it. She did it accidentally for someone that wanted access to something, and then I heard it. I got in contact with her, and she's like, my podcast is on YouTube? <laughs> but this is a quick excerpt from that first video she posted. And she said, I was tired, I was weary, I was sick of it. I told God, Lord, I would rather stay at the weight I am today than to keep losing and gaining it all back again. And I meant every word and syllable. It broke my heart to pray that prayer, but I was done. I had been dieting for almost five decades, and for the life of me, I couldn't make my body cooperate with the scores and scores of diets I had attempted over all those long years. It went like this. I lost the weight, I gained it back. Shame piled on. Lose the weight, gain shame. Repeat. Sound familiar? What if I told you there's a better way? And she also has a book by the same name, Still Becoming. She says, I am not dieting. I am healing. I am still becoming the woman he created me to be. I had heard her interviewed several years ago, and I found her story riveting. So if you have problems with body image, I highly suggest you hop on over to her channel, Laura Acuna at Still Becoming. And remember to go through your clothes, donate, or decide if something needs mending or tailoring. Hang everything back up in your closet by color. Have your dresses on one end, your pants on the other, and your tops in between, and sort them by color. Remember to be that easily approachable, soft-spoken, softly dressed, feminine woman so that men will want to approach you and not run from you. <laughs>